Hey guys, Dylan here. New patch is out. So this patch has, like some of the others, quite a lot of fixes for the comics. I feel most of the readers of this have already completed the comics and is no longer terribly relevant for them. So we are going to skip over those and to be honest, those and in a lot of cases, small graphical things, some of which from a quick, quick scroll through have already been fixed so a little uncertain why they are in this patch uh, we'll skip through those ones as well but let me just mention that the comics fixes what a lot of people right now are probably hoping for more relevant bug fixes to some of the gameplay play parts and a lot of people are looking for balance changes for the cards that are currently being played a lot i think that it's important to remember that the comics is something that a new player is often going to play through before they go into any pvp so if we want players to start the game and then enjoy the game enough to keep playing and therefore grow the player base i think it is important that those comics are as smooth as possible so i understand while it may not necessarily be what a lot of the current active members of the community want i understand the focus on some of the shop and comic fixes so anyway we'll look at the um just these balance change bits in this before we just pick out a few highlighted things out of general um, so this is a comic thing, we'll read through this one. So Superman Shazam, First Thunder Comic Adventure, Part 1 Player Deck Adjustment. Uh, so there was the potential to get totally high rolled by the AI. Um, so fixing that is good. Um, the deck has been adjusted to have more consistent early plays. This will improve the Part 2 playthrough. This one is obviously relevant to all of us because that one is the one that is out right now to be played. And then they've got, hey friends, we are aware that Flashpoint in particular has been problematic and we're working on toning down Hellblaze just a bit. So right there, they've, they've listened to the community. Uh, it's been a few weeks since we've had balance changes, but at least they are on the agenda. Um, the DC Dual Force team will be working towards fixing these issues, but unfortunately the fixes will not be in this patch. Please expect these changes to come with the next upcoming patch. Okay, good, so we've got a definite timeline. Oh, we deeply appreciate your patience in this critical time. Flashpoint is admittedly overtuned, and R&D will strive to not let power imbalances at that level fall through the cracks in the future. Thanks so much for helping us make DC Dual Force as good as it can be. Now, I think Flashpoint is a lot of the times fine. Um, it just is in those very high roll situations. And obviously, because of the way the card works, extremely hard to balance. It's not as much as just trimming a number here or there. Although they could just remove the draw one extra and that would kind of help. Moving on to the general stuff. Uh, so we made some updates to our installer slash launcher. Today's patch will take longer to download as a result. So hopefully that will, again, if we talk new player experience, want to have that's one of the things you want to have right. Literally the first thing that a new player is going to see. Um, In-game moments during comic events will now load more quickly. Uh, so this one, relevant, uh, something that everyone has been talking about. The final reward on the gold membership track will now give out a random deluxe super rare card in, in addition to a deluxe or alternate art versions of a top mini set card. Players who previously qualified to receive the final reward on the gold track for the September season will receive a random ultimate card for their collection separately, having erroneously received random super rares when the reward language said they should get ultimates. Right, comic fix. The deluxe crafting button is set to lock based on full price instead of the discounted price. Uh, comic fix. Tutorial stuff. The invincible visual effect is no longer visible on the board before leaders loaded up. That's a comic fix. Activating a leader that has choice selections will no longer lock players when ending their turn. Comic fix. Store fix. Comic fix. Lethal tooltip will now properly display when viewing Malcolm Merlin. The word action is now capitalized when viewing the hidden and aura tooltips. Lex Luthor's dialogue, so new player stuff. 
comic folks. Friends table will be highlighted first when viewing the social page. Comic facts. Players will be directed to the packs tab when selecting the get the latest packs button in the store. Clicking on the gems icon on the profile module will now direct you to the gem purchase page in the store. Reward pop-up for atoms no longer overlaps the atomization visual effects during atomization. Comic fix. The done button on the rewards page now behaves correctly. Display issues have been fixed when viewing rewards in the reward bundle UI. The rewards page will no longer be blank after completing a tutorial mission. Store images will no longer overlap with other store pop-ups. That one was supposed to be fixed twice already. Unowned leaders now display without any imperfections on the collection page. The deluxe version of the flash no longer displays eye distortion. Quest tab properly shows a re-rolled quest without having to refresh. Certain cards now properly display their summon and bonus attack tooltip descriptions. Certain cards no longer display a blank tooltip when previewed. Fix a typo on an error message that appears. So, I mean, very irrelevant. Uh, the faction counter highlight is now properly aligned and no longer overlaps the other factions. Again, this was supposed to be fixed twice already. Another comic fix and another comic fix. So the one thing that it does bring us <clears throat> is obviously a new comic, which it actually has not mentioned in here. If you pop over to the game, you'll see that there is a new comic available and with it comes a new card. So this is a bronze might card. Draw a bronze recruit and give them shield. Now, the power level of this card is yet to have been seen. Um, at first appearance, it looks like it's extremely underwhelming. Looking at potentially some other things, this might be quite overpowered. Uh, so there's a couple of different areas that we might be trying this card out. Um, pretty much both of them are with energy. Although putting it with Ivy could be potentially quite helpful because it counts as a draw and it gets you the recruit with the shield. So much like the likes of Crystal Ball, although much less variants, much like Favor of the Gods, it simply helps you thin your deck. So it's you pay a bronze to effectively be running one less card in your deck. Uh, uh, not great for tempo, however the fact that it gives them shield will probably make up for that. So really looking forward to using this card, um, I'm probably going to be pairing it with two different types of energy decks, so it'll be my energy times two. Um, once we have our hands on the card ourselves and hopefully it pays off and it doesn't just end up being a dud card. But yeah, so that's about it for the patch today, guys. Um, the discussion around balance has been raging for a bit. Uh, so again, two patches, no balance. Um, however, I do feel like players naturally start shifting. So when Flashpoint came out, uh, Batman Shazam was, you know, the big one. Some people were doing a little bit of Shazam IV, but it wasn't quite as prolific. Then Savannah came out, and boom, oh my god. Flashpoint and uh, Poison Ivy just became this hugely toxic deck with, like, them being able to deal, like, minus eight to both of your leaders on turn like three or four if they've got like a fly trap or a riddler down early uh, it just became really scary but what it was also is extremely low tempo so they do that combo but realistically they wouldn't have a lot on the board and so that led them led and i would say leading the charge has been hands of stone um started playing uh, batman aquaman list and we're, we're all going like back to the uh, 24 7 beta that deck was like the deck. And he started playing that and he was just whooping all of the Shazam IVs. Um, <clears throat> often days he'd pop into stream and be like, oh, I played 30 games today, I lost two. Um, and this, despite the fact that everyone was talking about how overtuned energy was and how underpowered might was. And yet here's Thomas kicking ass. Now, to be fair, the Blue Beetle cards are uh, in tactics largely helped play part of the success of the deck uh, and just tactics in general um however 
playing on the past couple of days. There's just an increasing amount of mono might and might tactics. And I haven't seen a Shazam Ivy in like the whole day. And I think I only saw two of them yesterday. The So that's sort of faded away. Shazam Batman, still around, not hugely common. Flash Doomsday, still around, not hugely common. Um, and so then with the Aquaman Batman rising, um, which obviously the new card could almost certainly fit into, I'm uh, not sure it will, but it could most certainly. You start to see the meta shifting, even without them having done any balance changes. And the last card that was released in the comic was a Tyranny card. <clears throat> and that is not what the meta is most currently sitting at right now. And with the rise of the Batman Aquaman, you start to see lists like Aquaman, unfortunately still using the Aquaman, but Aquaman... Lex, which I will have a video of shortly, which usually beats Aquaman Batman. And so it starts to become quite cyclical. Um, and you've got like Batman Ivy, very strong matchup into the Batman Aquaman. Still doesn't solve the problem that generally, if you're playing any particular faction, you play one leader. So if you're playing Energy, you usually play Shazam. If you're playing Might, you usually play Aquaman. If you're playing Tactics, you usually play Batman. If you're playing Tyranny, you usually play Ivy. Um, but regardless, there is... Players are starting to adapt to the meta without the balance changes. And so I think everyone needs to remember that instead of complaining about things. Uh, yes, there are cards that are overturned currently. But people are finding a way around it. Uh, it may not be fair that they have to forcibly build their deck a certain way. But if we look at physical card games, well, that happens. One deck emerges as, like, the big deal. And uh, the, the players are... But there's no rebalancing cards that are already released um, until they cycle out, if we talk, like, Magic the Gathering and their standard format. Um, so... And yet people find a way. Uh, so, yeah, the game will continue to cycle. Um, you might have three, four days, maybe a whole week of... Uh, one particular deck just absolutely dominating until somebody finds the deck that beats it and then that will start to cycle it and then everyone's going to complain about that but regardless there are overtuned cards currently there will be fixes for them eventually everyone just needs to chill the next big thing will come along and recently there hasn't even been uh driven by a new release or balance changes it just happened organically Anyway, that's my two cents. Everyone have a great day. Bye.